uh, being able to customize your grid, have multiple grid views, um, as well as some of the searching um, ability that you can do within the grid, um, sorting uh, the funnels which are available to you to um, view specific um, items or uh, just different things within the grid as well as the usage of it, which would include items such as uh, the assigning uh, drivers and vehicles, as well as being able to do exporting out of it, uh, which would uh, also help you with uh, being able to create perhaps custom reports for a customer that was looking for something All specific. Right. So um, again, the grid here, uh, various items on the grid. Um, as you can see, if I scroll across the grid, I have other items that I'm not displaying on there. Um, one of the things to keep in mind that the items that you see on this grid are all customizable for you to create your own views. Now, if I go up here, up in the top up here where it says show all columns. As you can see, I now have just about every bit of information that is inside the reservations available for you to view on the grid. Now, most likely no end users would ever be utilizing it in such a manner because there's too much information there. What you can do from this grid is you have the ability to sort it and create a grid to your liking. You can grab any one of the columns and simply drag it to where you would like it to be on your grid. That includes all of the columns. You just drag them along to get them into a view that suits you best for what your needs are. You also have the ability to remove various columns simply by right clicking on the column header, you may then remove the column one at a time if you would like. You also have the ability, again, by right clicking at the top there, to move them all to a chooser, the column chooser. So if I select the move all to column chooser, you'll see that I've cleared my grid out. From here, down in the lower right hand corner, I have a list of all of the columns that are available on the grid. I can then from this point, move any one of them simply by dragging and dropping up at the top up there. Again, you can see I can scroll through all of these. Um, again, some of these are just random columns that I'm adding up there. But once you get that grid situated to how you would like it to be, Again, I'm going to move all of them back in here by clicking the show all columns. Once you've moved a grid to create it to how you would like, what you want to do is you want to select the customize option up in the upper right hand corner. When you click on that, you'll be presented with a list of grids that you have either already created or by default are preloaded to the program. If you want to create a grid that's available for you to use at any time, simply select the Save Current Grid Layout. You will label that grid. You may have a dispatching grid. You may have a scheduling grid. Uh, you may have a group grid. They can be all different items. Select the OK option, and then that item is now added to your list. If that is the grid that you would like to see every time you log into the program, still having access to any of the other options here, highlight that grid, click on the toggle selected as default, and you will see that it entered an asterisk in front of it. That asterisk indicates that that will be the grid that you will see when you first log into the program. Again, of course, you have the ability to access any of the other ones. Now, as an administrative user within the program, you have the ability to create global grids, which can then be used by all of the users. You see a couple here are labeled global grids. That means if you create a grid that you would like the rest of the staff to also be able to utilize, once you've created it, click on the toggle selected as global, 
and it now becomes a grid that is available for everybody to use within the program. Um, it will be their default one when they log in, but they also have access to any other ones that they may have created that they want to utilize. So again, if I want to go back to any of these grids, I simply highlight it, select the use selected grid view, and it will bring me back to that grid. So that's one of the ways that you're able to customize the views on the grid um, for your usage, which best suits you um, in whatever position you may be utilizing there. Some of the other things um, that you'll see on the grid, um, you'll notice that several of the headers have a bold heading on them. Um, such as driver name, pickup times, um, different things like that. Anything that has a bold heading may be affected directly from the grid, meaning I do not have to open up the reservation if I want to make a change to a particular item on this. So for instance, in this one here, um, we'll go to this one here, perhaps the customer calls and wants to make a change to the reservation. You do not need to open the reservation in order to update the time. Simply click on the item, select whatever you want to change there, and you have the ability right there to change it from within the grid. That, that is also available on many of the other things. Maybe a passenger name has changed. You are able to change it directly from the grid, phone numbers, other items within that list. That also means the drivers, when I want to assign my various drivers to the reservations, I am simply clicking on the box and then from the list, selecting the driver that I want to assign to that reservation. You'll also notice that there are a couple of things in here, um, little indicators over here, letting me know that this driver has items that have expired. So I may wanna go review what those items are prior to assigning them to the reservation. Other ones here obviously don't have any problems. Um, I can also see the driver license expiration down at the bottom down here, the little indicator here, it's giving me a list of all of the drivers which have items expired. Um, they may be pertinent to the reservation or not, but normally if you see that, you'd want to go check it out and see if they're uh, available for that reservation. So to assign that driver, simply select their name from the list, click the OK, and depending upon your settings, you'll have this pop-up that's asking for garage time. In this instance, I'm going to click OK and you'll see that the driver is assigned to that reservation. Again, you can select any of those. If you need to clear the driver, you're simply selecting the option, reassigning the driver to the reservation, and it will assign the driver. The vehicle also is assigned in the same manner. The vehicle is your physical assets. By selecting on the option there, I have the ability here to select any of my vehicles to assign to it. Now I can scroll through these, or I can simply start typing, and it'll bring me to the ones I want. And again, you'll see that it has a little indicator here that these vehicles have something expired could be something as simple as oil or maybe the registration that needs to be uh, checked or airport cards. Um, again, down here at the bottom, you have the vehicle licensing expiration. That's a reminder down here. You can see all of those things in there. So again, if I want to assign the vehicle, simply select the vehicle from the list and click OK. Now, you may notice at times that there will be a line across the vehicle type. What this indicates is the vehicle that I have assigned to this reservation does not match the vehicle type that was requested for the reservation. Um, it does not mean that I cannot sign it. It's just an indicator that you have the wrong vehicle type assigned to it. So in this instance, um, 12 passenger limo, if I go look back at this vehicle here, I'll see that the uh, 202 is a sedan. 
um, probably don't want to assign that. But there are times where I would have a sedan, uh, maybe only my SUV is available to go get the uh, passenger. I can still assign them to that reservation. Um, it'll just create that line there. So it's just a reminder that perhaps you have the wrong vehicle ass uh, assigned to that reservation. Status updates are another function of the dispatch grid here. When a reservation is first booked, it will have a status of booked. Now you'll recall from a previous webinar that all of these color codings here are able to be set up underneath the global settings on the dispatch tab. There is an area there in the upper right where you can change these colors to suit whatever you would prefer on those. Um, again, when a reservation is first booked, it will have a status of booked. There are other statuses through here that may or may not be used depending upon your operational procedures there. Trip confirmed normally indicates that uh, I have confirmed it with the customer or the passenger to verify that the information was correct. Uh, some people utilize this, some people do not. Driver scheduled, indicating that the driver has been scheduled to the reservation. As you can see up here, it has drivers scheduled on there. Once you mark the reservation as driver scheduled, you have now made it able for them to be able to be viewed within the driver app. Um, so keep in mind that if you do not move it to driver scheduled, the driver would not be able to see that within the driver app. Driver confirmed. This can either be a dispatch function that uh, I've spoke to the driver and they have confirmed they have received it. Or again, if you are using the driver app, the driver then has the ability to confirm it within their app, letting them take responsibility that they have actually seen that. Uh, the change log does keep track of that. So if the driver were to confirm it, it would be noted within the change log that the driver had been the one that actually updated that. Other actions here, in route, on location, on board, and dropped. Those are the normal statuses that we go through within a reservation. Uh, keeping in mind that these can be either affected by dispatch, or again, if you're using the driver app, the driver can be updating those statuses as well. Uh, eliminating the need for perhaps the dispatcher to keep track of those. However, they are updating directly on the screen here so they can see the things that are happening. Dropped would be uh, probably our final action. Uh, once a reservation has been dropped, it is then available to be uh, billed out within the costing area. Keep in mind that the costing and billing is an uh, upcoming webinar where we'll address all of that stuff there. But once the job has been dropped, it does then become available for the billing department to bill it and cost it out, pay it, create invoices, as well as create the driver pay. No show also allows uh, the billing department to have control of that reservation. There are two other ones down here, canceled and canceled non-billable, or not billable, excuse me. Canceled, customer has called and uh, canceled the reservation. Canceled, not billable, indicates that they called early enough to uh, be outside of your cancellation policies um, when it gets into the billing area back there for them to address. So again, just moving through those, if I move in route, on location, uh, all those different things there. Keep in mind that all of those actions are going to be affecting uh, emails and or SMS text messages that are going out to your customers and passengers based upon your settings. So if I had my SMS messages set to go to the passenger, at that point they would now have received the text message letting them know that the driver is in route it would also provide the driver name and a cell number for that driver if provided within the uh, driver profile. Looking at the grid, a couple other things I want to address here. Uh, over on the left side, uh, again, depending upon where you have it set on your grid, 
you'll see various columns here. Uh, there are ones with airplanes. Those are indicating to me that those are either arrivals or departures. As you can see, pointing downward indicates it's an arrival. Pointing upward indicates it's a departure. You'll also notice that this particular one has turned green on me. That is a function of the flight tracking that allows me to see that that uh, flight is uh, on time or within the parameters that I have set within my uh, global settings, um, whether I want to be uh, notified of perhaps 10 minutes, 15 minutes early or late on either direction of that. Um, if I right click on that reservation, as you can see, I have all of the information available to me without needing to open that reservation. I can also select the flight tracking and it's going to give me all of the information about that flight. It's got the scheduled time, as you can see, and it also has an actual gate time as well as runway time. In this particular one, it has a uh, scheduled arrival of 153. Looks like it's going to be a little early today at 140. Uh, it also tells me which terminal it's coming into as well as the gate. Uh, letting me know uh, if you have multiple ter terminals, perhaps letting the driver know which terminal they need to be uh, going to to meet this passenger. That information is also available on the driver app for them to see that stuff there. Um, future reservations lets me see all of the future reservations for this particular customer allows me to quickly verify, perhaps the customer calls up and you want to verify all of his future reservations, it lets you see all that stuff there quickly without having to scroll through different group screens looking for it. Incidents allows me to log an incident for this reservation. It may be associated to the customer, it may be associated to the driver if I want to, um, or an affiliate as well as you have the ability to put in lost revenue here. So perhaps uh, due to a driver error or something to that effect, you've lost all the revenue for this job. This allows you to keep track of this and generate reports further down the line. Um, anything I type in here, incident description, will then show up within the billing area, letting the uh, accounting department or the billing department see any incidences that may have happened on there. Um, I can add, edit, delete those. Now keep in mind that most users would not be able to edit or delete. That's normally just a function of the administrator being able to do that. Um, the user would only be able to add to the list uh, without being able to um, delete them. And as you can see, there's an export here if you want to export it out to Excel spreadsheet for further analysis. So again, these columns here, there are several things that you will see. Um, there is a little indicator here, three little triangles, if you would. This lets me know that this is a multi-segment reservation. What that indicates is that there are more than one reservation attached to this. So if I were to try to cancel this reservation, it would let me know that there are future reservations, um, letting me address with the customer right away, making sure if they wanted to cancel the future reservations or not. Um, this note indicator indicates that there are notes within the reservation. If I highlight that line, click on the res notes, you will see that there are notes added to this reservation. These may be just little uh, reminders about something for this reservation that they need to do, um, such as don't forget the uh, dozen roses to take to this customer for their wedding, um, anything like that. There are dispatch notes as well as driver notes uh, that can be added from the driver as well as from the dispatch notes. You can type in there as well, and it shows up on the grid. Uh, if I put something there, click the OK. There is a column called dispatch notes. Um, there's something here, as you can see, what I typed in there just displayed here as dispatch notes. 
This is a writable column. So anything I put in there can be entered into there also, and it will update into there. Now this, the, keep in mind, this does not print anywhere. These are merely internal notes. Uh, it could be something such as, don't forget to collect a credit card, still awaiting flight information, um, anything you wanna place in there. And again, if you had that column located early in the grid there, you would be able to see it without having to scroll across there. So if there's any ever any questions as to what this little white area here means, up here on the right, there's a little question mark. If I click on that question mark, it tells me what everything is over here. As you can see, there's arrivals, departures, uh, some of the various things over here on the left side. I'll see that these are all globes indicating that they are booked reservation. Repeated reservation lets me know that this reservation was repeated into the future. Um, incoming affiliate reservations would let me know that this had been sent from another uh, fast track user into my system. Reservation farmed out to an e-affiliate would let me know that I had been sent out to another one. Group reservation, where you see this blank column right here, there would be this little indicator letting me know that that was a reservation that was booked underneath the group function. And again, all those various things there. Couple things here also, you'll notice that some of these have red, some of them have yellow, and one couple of them, I guess, have nothing on it. A yellow indicates to me that there are additional stops and or passengers associated to this reservation. If I click the little plus sign, you'll see that I have stops entered into that reservation. Uh, you can also update those stops here if you would like to just simply by typing, select any of that, and it'll add that as a stop to the reservation. The red indicates to me that there's been a change made to this reservation on the day of dispatch. By highlighting that reservation there and selecting the view changes, in here, I can see the changes that were made to this reservation. As you can see, previously it was booked for the 20th. It was moved to today, the 27th. And in this instance, I can see that the system administrator had entered this or made the changes to this reservation. Now, each user would have their own username when they log in. Uh, it would say Kathy, Mike, whatever it might be, letting you know who made the change what time they made the change, as well as what was changed on this reservation. Um, that lets you see the various changes there. Now, if I come in here and look and make no actions to it, you will see that it remained red. However, it did log that I viewed it, so it knows that I looked at that thing. However, normally a dispatcher would most likely acknowledge the changes. In so doing, it removes the red. What that does now is if a reservation or somebody else were to make a change to that reservation, the dispatcher would be able to see the new change to it and go in and look at it and see what was going on with that particular one there. Now, also within the grid, Obviously, we can move a day backward. We can move a week forward. We can always move to today by clicking on the today option. The grid also enables you to look at multiple days on the grid if you would like to. By default, it's going to be looking at noon and it's going to be looking 12 hours forward and 12 hours backward. However, if I wanted to look into the future, I could simply come in here, select how many hours into the future I want to look. And as you'll see now, I see jobs from today as well as jobs for tomorrow and the following day, all listed on the same screen here. Now here's one of the things that uh, is also available on this grid. Of course, I can sort by clicking on the column. And as you can see, it will 
sort them in whatever order I want those in there. But I also have the ability, if I drag this column and drop it right there, it will now separate out the days. So here's the 27th, here's the 28th, and here's the 1st. So this would enable you to be looking at multiple days on your grid all at the same time while still working on today. Um, as you can see, like I said, I have several days placed out into the future. I can still be dispatching for today while looking at tomorrow's jobs out in front of me. Um, if you want to remove that, simply drag it, drop it back down to where it was, and it'll be right there. Now, that little function of being able to move a column header up to the top up here is available on every single one of these columns. So perhaps I wanted to get a view of how my vehicle types were laid out today. If I drag that and drop that there, you'll see here's all my sedan S classes. Here's all my sedans and there's all my SUVs. So everything that I move around enables me to do that. Uh, just drag it and drop it up there. Same with the driver. Brian, yes. I'm sorry to interrupt. We've got a couple of questions here. One is, is there a status for a quote or would you have a separate grid for that? Can you <clears throat> demonstrate there how we identify quotes? Sure. So Let me go. Is, no, uh, there's not a status for, well, there is a status for quotes, but can you have a quote you can reveal? I can. I'll flip a reservation to a quote right now. Uh, if I go to this, uh, let's go down to this reservation looks like a good one. Now, normally this would have occurred when I was booking the reservation. All I did was click on the edit option there and it opens up the reservation. Most likely it would have been saved as a quote. So when I was booking the reservation in the beginning, I would have selected this option down here to save it as a quote. I can always go back into, as you can see, any reservation and change it back to a quote. So I just checked that little option there. I'm gonna click the okay. It's gonna make sure I wanna do it. Safety first. And as you see, it's now a quote. So it has a white indicator here, letting me know that it's a quote. If you also look at this, it does. it is now italicized, another visual cue that it's been uh, booked as a quote. Um, if you want to now change that to a confirmed reservation, sure. simply- First show them what to do to, to make sure the quote's not visible on the grid because you wouldn't want to mess up today's dispatch. Okay. I quotes in the ribbon. Yeah, there are options up here as to what I'm viewing on my grid. So if I would wanna hide my quotes, I simply click on the hide quotes option. And as you can see, the quotes are gone. I also have the ability to hide drop jobs by doing that option there. That way, as the status was being changed to dropped on the reservations, they would be be removed from my view. So I wouldn't be having to scroll through an entire day. That also exists for canceled jobs. Any canceled jobs would be hidden, as well as no-show jobs. Anything I want to remove automatically from my view by selecting any one of these options. Now, if I click there, again. Oh, you're there to show the status highlight on and off too, so we can cover that whole panel. Okay. Um, status highlight in the yeah. ribbon. The, okay, the status highlight, as you can see right now on my grid, the only column that is highlighted for the status is the particular status column here. I do have the option by selecting the status highlight on, as you will see now the entire column or the entire row is now highlighted the the status color. Perfect. So all my books, Next. blue. My driver. Question. Betsy Roberts has a question about, uh, is there a way to change the status to drivers scheduled on all jobs for that day instead of doing them one by one? For example, uh, having dispatched all of tomorrow uh, and, and aligned drivers and vehicles, I now want to change. I'm not doing it automatically. I now want to change all of them at one time. Yes. Um, 
Okay, we'll go down that route now. Okay, so one of the things also that you're able to do um, is be able to update multiple jobs all at one time. That means I could affect the pickup times, I could affect the status, I could multi-assign drivers and or vehicles to a reservation. In order to do that, you select this option here that says update multiple jobs. Once I've done that, you'll see a little window pop up down here in the lower right. Any action I take in here, so let me go ahead and just start clicking on some of these reservations here. As you can see, as I click it, it added the number down here. I can select as many as I would like here. I can even use my shift key and multi-select um, by dropping down through there. Now, any action I want to take on all of these reservations, and most likely this would be a driver or perhaps a status or vehicle. Um, if I want all of these reservations in this instance to be marked as driver confirmed or driver scheduled, um, I would simply select the driver scheduled, click OK, and they will all be marked as driver scheduled now. Now that would come into play if you were perhaps uh, working on a schedule for tomorrow and you don't want all of your drivers to be able to see their reservations yet. Once you have them all set, um, I would mark all of them as drivers scheduled, let the drivers know that all of their work is available to them to see. And again, that is affected. I can do that with any of the items there um, that, whoops. Let me go ahead and click that one there, that one, that one. I could assign a driver. Once I assign the driver to one of them, that driver would be assigned to all of them simply by selecting that. Um, yeah, I guess so. Um, click on cancel on that one there, cancel, and one more cancel, and we're all set. And as you can see, the driver is now assigned to all of those. Now, one thing that may have been noticed on a couple of these is when I assigned a particular driver, let me go to this one here, and assign a driver to it, uh, so I didn't figure out which one it was, perhaps any of them. Let's go with that one. Sometimes you'll see that, um, a vehicle will be assigned at the same time with the driver. Now, we address this area up here, except for the search, which we'll come back to, but there's also something here called view on left, view on top. If I select the view on left, in so doing, it's going to open up over here on the left side some information that can be utilized for dispatching. Um, it lets me see the status of a vehicle, letting me know what time they're estimated to be finished, so I could readily see when they would be available to be assigned to a reservation. I can also see drivers, um, letting me know when they're ready to be finished from their next job, allowing me to schedule them appropriately. There's also something called assigned drivers. In here, if I go to any one of these vehicles, we'll go to 201 here, for instance, I can assign a driver to that vehicle. In this instance, I'm gonna assign Bubba to it. He is now assigned to that reservation. Now, what that means, if I come back over to my grid over here. To that vehicle, to the vehicle to that vehicle. If I come back over here and assign Bubba to the reservation, at the same time, the vehicle will be assigned to the reservation. So if you have drivers that are assigned to uh, vehicles permanently, you can do that. I can override that, of course, if I needed to switch him to a different vehicle. I can come in here and put him in a different vehicle. He'll be remain assigned to it, but it does allow me to override if he had to make a vehicle change for any option in there. 
dashboard status. This lets me see the status of all of my drivers that are logged in or users within the uh, dispatch um, grid or not grid, the dispatch um, stat dashboard status, excuse me, meaning that they're using the driver app. Right now I can see certain drivers that are on duty and I have a bunch of drivers that are not on duty. A um, couple that are off duty on there. It just quick, quickly lets me see which drivers are going to be working today or which ones are out there uh, waiting for me to assign jobs to them. Now that was a view on left. I can also view on top. Um, let me do this. Oh yeah, view on top. As you can see, there's my list there. Um, let's me go through all of those things there. Um, Hide current status brings me back to my normal grid there. There is a grid view, a grid timeline, and dispatch, visual dispatch. If I select my grid and timeline, I now have a, uh, I guess, a graph here of my various jobs throughout the day, uh, letting me know which drivers are assigned to reservations. I can see that Al Smith uh, goes from here. A driver is doing these different things. He's switching vehicles here, which is probably not smart with that little bit of time there. But it lets me just see how the drivers are laid out throughout the day. Um, I can also utilize my visual dispatch by selecting that. What I have up on top up here is a list of all of my uh, vehicles um, or my jobs. Uh, again, letting me have a visual view. As you can see, I have Al Smith and a driver. I have a job here at 3.30 that has no driver associated to it right now. Now, I can drag that down to here and drop that onto a particular vehicle, that vehicle is now assigned to it. Now, if I had a driver permanently assigned to that vehicle, it would have done both at the same time and assigned them to it. Um, I can bring it back up here and it is now unassigned from that vehicle. I also have the ability by double clicking on it, it will open it up for me. And from here, I can assign a vehicle to it and or a driver that I want to, as well as update the status directly from here. So this just enables you to look at your grid. And as you can see, I can expand out how many hours into the future I wanna see here. If I go 48 hours in advance, I see today's jobs. I'm gonna wander into tomorrow's here pretty soon, um, showing me tomorrow. I have some jobs here at 820, 1015, 1020. Um, so if I wanted to, I can dispatch directly from here, drag that, drop that down to there. Uh, perhaps drag that and drop that into the same vehicle, letting me see where my gaps are on my dispatching um, quickly uh, without perhaps having to look at the grid. So when we go back to the grid here, there are, Again, other things I can do on here. Um, one of the things, if I take my drivers, go like that, I can quickly see this is what driver A is doing. This is what driver Al Smith is doing. This is what Bubba Jones is doing. In the top one here, these are all of my unassigned drivers or reservations. So I could quickly see which ones, uh, when a driver would be available to do other jobs there. There's many, many ways to look at the grid. Um, just depends on what you're looking for at any certain time. Again, I'm gonna bring this back to, to just today's view on this thing. Did you cover filtering? Uh, I'm working my way there. Um, so those are many of the functions that are, that are available. Uh, trip details lets me see inside the reservation without having open it. Right clicking on a reservation lets me see inside of the reservation without having to open it. Of course, you can always use the uh, edit booking there. Um, 
One of the things there that uh, also was mentioned by Eddie there is not only can I sort these things by dragging and dropping up there, but perhaps I want to get just a view of a customer or what they're doing over the next couple of days or even a driver. Every column, as you'll notice, has a little filter up at the top of it. It's kind of hard to see there, but it's a little filter there. So if I wanted to just click on this and I have this customer on the phone and they want to verify all of their jobs for the next couple of days, by selecting that option right there, those will be the only jobs I will see on my grid. As you can see, it tells me right here that it's filtered. So if I want to clear that, the little X down in the lower left-hand corner there brings me back to my normal things. Now, I did mention that uh, perhaps sometimes you wanted to create a report off of this grid. We're going to go into a little bit more detail on this on the reporting side uh, once we get to that uh, webinar there. But I can go here, select a customer. Remember, I can add in whatever columns I want to that particular view right here. And then if I want to export that out, I simply click on the export. I can pull it out in Excel, PDF, or CSV if I would. So if you have that customer that wants it in a particular view, a particular order, they don't want to see statuses, but they want the driver name to be the first thing in their list that they see, drag that, drop that over there. Then once you get that, sort it by the customer. Keep in mind that you can save that, should that customer need that in the future, by clicking on the customize, save it, you have access to that for the future, and then export that out for their usage. Um, I think that covers most of the grid functions there. There are some things that we've talked about before, the SMS text, you can see all the list of text messages there. You can also, from the grid, by highlighting any of the reservations, you have the ability to email trip tickets to the drivers, email confirmations, uh, as well as invoice uh, estimates there. You can view the changes there. You can also map the booking directly from the reservation. So let's get back out of this thing here. Hey, Brian, let's, let's cover a couple of questions that we have from folks. Uh, one of the ones I want that we get all the time that's not been asked right now is um, driver by time. Uh, the shift, you know, selecting, uh, selecting driver, shift, and clicking time, you'll get the driver by time sorting. Oh, well, actually that was fixed. Um, so right now, whatever sort you do, whether it's by driver or vehicle, automatically the secondary sort is now by pickup time. There was an issue previously where you would have to do a double sort, but now it is anytime I sort by driver, you'll see that the uh, reservations are also listed in chronological order. Um, so that was fixed a while back ago, yes. Good, thanks for reminding me, that's great. Uh, the next one is once you show them what the, um, where the refresh is, and where the, what the question mark does, the legend? The refresh right here. Uh, now, by default, let me go up here because you may or may not have ever stumbled across this. If I go to the menu, my user options, there's an option right here that sets when the screen automatically refreshes. So what that means right now is I have it set at one. If I were to just be sitting here staring at my screen, every minute it would refresh. So if somebody else had been updating statuses, it would take a minute and then it would see it on my screen. Now normally, every time you're opening up things and doing things, it's automatically refreshing. However, if you were again just sitting there and wanted to refresh, you simply click on the refresh button here and that will update the screen based upon what everybody else has done on the screen. But again, keep in mind that if you're in and out of the program doing different things, it's automatically refreshing. The only time that that would come into play is if you were just sitting there staring at it, not taking any actions, um, then it would be doing the one minute or again, you can do the grid refresh there. 
So the uh, question mark again tells me what all of the uh, various icons are, as well as what each of the meanings mean on everything. Uh, so again, you'll see different things here. Customer is VIP. You'll see their name is highlighted in red over here. Um, just different things on there letting you know the things. So that's underneath the question mark right there. One thing I do want so to address the, real quick, because okay. I forgot this part here is the search. This enables me at any moment to search for any confirmation without having to look through days. I can also do date ranges. I can do a search by booking date or scheduled pickup date. I can search by names, passenger names, booked by, credit card numbers. Uh, just keep in mind that you can pretty much search for anything utilizing the search option in the uh, upper ribbon up there. I'm sorry, Eddie, go ahead. Okay, uh, Cynthia asked a question. She, she missed where you find select multiple jobs. Can you point that out for her on the screen there? Sure. I'll update multiple. Jobs. Update multiple jobs by selecting that option there. You'll see that the window opens up down in the bottom down here, uh, allowing me to then select multiple jobs if I want to take actions on these by selecting any one of those. And then any action I take on that particular reservation will then update them all as well. Now, one warning I do want to give here, because this, I just remembered this, and this is an important one here. You do have the ability to repeat. So if you had eight jobs here that were booked for today, and the customer wanted these eight jobs over the next eight days doing the same exact thing, I would simply click on the repeat after I brought that in there. Delete selected is a delete. It does not remove it from this list. So if you click on delete, it is going to delete all of the reservations that you have listed in this window here, which could be used at times. Maybe I entered a bunch of reservations and I want them all out at one time. I would do that. Um, however, most likely just exit out of there and then restart. That's, your a very important, that, that's a very important distinction you just made that the delete does not refer to the listing of confirmation numbers. It literally is saying I have, 50 jobs highlighted on the current grid. If I click on that delete selected because they're multiply selected, it's going to delete all those orders. It's going to permanently delete them. Now it, it could come into play again. Maybe you entered a whole month's worth of work and realized that something was wrong with it and it's easier just to start all over again. Yes. Then go delete it. And again, I could select, use my shift key, get the entire thing here, delete it, and every single reservation is going to be gone. Just remember, delete is delete. Okay, any other questions and remember, there? Delete is mission controlled. It's uh, administrator level or, or those, those other job functions and roles within the organization that you decide you want to give delete privileges to. Not everyone should be able to delete out of the grid and out of your system. Exactly. Uh, one more, one more question that we have here that was Cynthia's in pointing out the multiple jobs. Trish asked, uh, when a driver uh, rejects a trip, where does, this, where does it show this? In other words, that you've assigned a job, he's on the driver app, but he rejects the job because of either conflict or he's getting off further than expected or has something he didn't tell you about this afternoon. Uh, what's the action on the grid that tells me he rejected it? The job goes back to trip confirmed. So it would be removed from driver scheduled back to trip confirmed. That would be your only indicator that uh, they had rejected the reservation. So once we assign him, if the driver rejects it, it's not going to stay driver assigned. It's going to go back to trip confirmed and therefore you know if there's a problem with him. He, we've got we've to find another driver. He, he did not take the job. We exactly. Exactly. Okay, uh, any other questions out there today? Can you hear me okay? Mm-hmm, yes. Uh, Dennis Bennett, uh, any chance that the visual dispatch view can become available for more than 48 hours out? Um, there, there's a chance that we could take it up to 72. Uh, the, the, the more you, in the future that you ask it to look, uh, the more times that you are apt to, if you've got some of our clients have
could lock up your screen. But yeah, it's possible. Uh, Eddie, you uh, cut out in the middle of that, so. Yeah, my headset's starting to go after an hour here. Um, uh, Lewis asked a question, how to print all reservations for a day? Okay, so underneath the documents, anything you wanna do multiple actions to, or not multiple actions, but you wanna do multiple documents or anything else like that. If I go up to the document option up here, any of these are individual actions to the reservation I have highlighted. If I go to multiple documents, in here you'll see I have trip tickets, confirmations, various things through here. So if I wanted to create all of these trip tickets at one time, again, sort by whatever day I want to. As you can see, I have a couple of days here, but I could bring this down to one day. Again, simply use your shift key or your control key, or you can individually select one at a time. If I create the trip tickets, they're all gonna get printed out at one time. If I wanna email them to all to the drivers, select email and it'll print out all of them. There is also an option here, as you can see, where if I wanted to get a blank trip ticket, uh, if I needed that for some reason. So confirmations, um, again, highlight them all, click on the view confirmations and you'll be prompted with a print option there. You have a customer manifest. We'll look at this real quick here. Um, obviously, I've got multiple customers on here. I would have normally sorted by one particular customer um, once this thing comes up here. You have the ability, all of these columns, again, here's all my uh, different jobs that were on there, customer, it has the pickup time, drop-off time, all those things there. Now, keep in mind that everything, every column, pretty much everywhere in the grid has a filter. So if I needed to just look at that particular customer stuff there, I could create the trip manifest for those. A dispatch manifest provides me a little bit more information than the customer manifest. Dispatch manifest has driver name, phone number, as well as a vehicle that's assigned to the reservation um, and any amounts that are due on that reservation provided to you, uh, trip invoice estimate. So keep in mind. Again, again Lewis, um, if, if you just needed a, a simple list of orders for the day too, and you didn't want to have a formal report as Brian is showing you, you can create what he, what he did before with a customized view and simply export that in uh, any word or any other uh, uh, view available to you on the export and and basically print it with it. My headset's really messing up here, sorry guys. Okay, uh, is there any other questions there or? Yes, uh, when, um, when a driver uses the app, where can we see the driver times on the ultimate program? That would be two places, uh, Brian, on the dashboard and also the driver times columns uh, within the grid. So if you could expand your grid and show them the driver times. Yep, I'll go ahead and click on the show all columns there. Uh, way down here somewhere that could be anywhere. Um, okay, so these times right here, uh, on location, in route, all of that stuff is available there. There's also, if I right click on the reservation, hopefully I remember this correctly, um, right here, it's got the in route, on location, actual pickup, drop off time available right there for you to view quickly from that window also. Um, that's where you would see all their times that are being uh, entered through the driver app. Uh, Lewis asked, uh, does the search um, work for archived reservations? Yes. The search is whatever I want to do. Uh, if I want to look for a old confirmation, it's going to bring that uh, confirmation to me. Um, I can also set my date ranges if I want to go back. 60 days, 90 days, whatever I want to do. Reservations are never hidden. 
they're always visible. Uh, it's just a matter of if you're looking at them or not. Uh, if I did a passenger name search and I wanted to do it for the last 60 days, that would be the date range that would look for uh, those particular things for me. Okay. Yeah. Last, last thing, Brian, from my uh, viewpoint here is show them what the hide ribbon does because on busy days, if you had a busy day where you needed to see more orders on the screen, you can click on hide ribbon and it will expand your screen. Okay, hide ribbon. Now I've got rid of the ribbon. Yeah, it just gives you more, more real estate to work with. And of course, also on busy days, you can use the time uh, to narrow the time frame you're looking at and therefore restrict, restrict your view. So if you had a, a bunch of either book jobs or uh, jobs that weren't scheduled yet, and you, you just needed to look at active jobs within the next two hours, you can align your times up there just to, to look at what you need to focus on. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Uh, don't forget, sign up for next week. Uh, it's going to go over the updates, all of the new features in it. Uh, so hopefully uh, you'll see some of those things there. Don't forget, uh, end of March, we will be appearing in Las Vegas at the limo show. Uh, take a couple of by, minutes. By popular demand, yeah. I should say. Right. Mm -hmm. By popular demand. We're back in Vegas, right? Some of us by popular demand. Others, I don't know. Um, take a couple of minutes, stop by and see us. We'll be glad to go over some of the features there and anything else you want to know. Thank you everybody for attending today. Hope to see you all next week. Bye.